Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, video tutorial for performing a basic fluid flow simulation using ANSYS Discovery. If this is your first time using Discovery, I suggest you go through the videos on the welcome screen to get a better feel for the UI components, navigation, selection, the different tools, the overlay help system, and so on. Otherwise, you can click here to launch the home page. Click Browse and Open Geometry File to import a CAD model. Navigate to the appropriate folder, select the geometry you want, and click Open. OK, this is the geometry that we're going to use for this tutorial. Um, now, before we get started, I want to point out that by default, you are in Explore mode. Explore mode uses our real-time GPU solvers to give you very quick directional guidance on the performance of your particular uh, device. In part two of this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Analyze mode to get much more high fidelity and uh, um, high accuracy results on the same geometry. OK, let's get started. Now, before we go, uh, I want to show you a couple of ways you can look inside this model, which is kind of what you want to do for a fluid flow simulation. The first way is to look at a cross section. And the easiest way to do that for this model is to click on the Y axis in the global coordinate system and hit X for cross section mode. OK, so you see here we have a, a duct with kind of a vein to help the flow uh, turn that corner. Um, once you're done looking at the cross section, you can just hit D to get back into 3D mode. Another way to, to do this is to select the, the bodies that you're interested in and then click here to turn them transparent. Note that you have access to similar controls on the bottom left corner of the user interface. So if I select those two bodies again, you'll notice that I can change transparencies and make them opaque again by clicking here. OK, now you saw from the cross-section mode that uh, there isn't a fluid domain or a fluid body which represents the, uh, the, the volume through which the flow is going to go through this duct. We need to create that. Now, you can, of course, create this in your native CAD system. But if you're not able to do that, we have handy tools which allow you to do that in ANSYS Discovery. Now, on the top, you'll notice a ribbon, which is uh, open uh, by default to the Simulation tab. But we also have other tabs, such as Design, Facets, Display, Measure, and Prepare, which give you handy geometry tools to do whatever geometry prep you need to do. So we're going to go to the Prepare tab and click on the Volume Extract tool. Now, this launches the HUD or head up display. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to remind you that at any time, you can hit F1. And this will launch the overlay help system. And this is a great way to learn what these different icons and tools do. To dismiss the overlay help system, hit F1 again. OK, to extract the fluid domain, what we're going to do is click on this face, this face, and this face. And then select this icon to identify the uh, seed face. So that's just any internal face. And when you're done with that, just click on this green check mark. You see, it has automatically created the fluid volume. To dismiss the head up display, hit Escape two times. Now, if I go back into cross section mode, and once again, I do that by selecting the y axis and hitting X, you can see that uh, the fluid domain has been created. Hit D to come back into 3D mode. Now let's go back to the simulation tab up on top. Uh, now we need to apply some physics inputs. And let's do that a couple of different ways. So first, let's select this inlet. And then click here to expose the halo. The halo is an easy way to access the most common tools that you will use when using ANSYS Discovery. So in this case, it's showing you the physics tool. So let's click on fluid flow and apply a flow condition. So let's uh, apply a velocity. And let's say it's 1 meter per second. Okay, And uh, you'll notice the moment I do that on the bottom in the SID or simulation information display, it shows you an icon indicating that you are now running a fluid flow simulation. Now, in addition to velocity, I also want to specify a temperature. And I do that by clicking here. 
and let's apply a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Now you'll notice in the SID, the fluid flow icon has changed color, indicating that you are also solving for temperature. Okay, now let's hit escape two times to dismiss the HUD. The alternate way to apply these inputs is to select the fluid flow tools from the ribbon. So by clicking here, that launches the HUD again. Just select the body, or I'm sorry, the face. Let's say that this is also one meter per second, but the temperature in this location is, um, let's say, 50 degrees Celsius. So it's a little bit hotter. Now you can keep the HUD open and select the outlet and just switch the type from inlet to outlet by using this drop down menu. And then when you're done, let's accept the uh, default of zero pressure and 22 degrees Celsius uh, outlet temperature. And let's just click accept. Now you'll notice that as I've uh, applied these inputs on the simulation tree on the left, they show up. And you can just mouse over on the physics tree or the simulation tree to see what you have applied and uh, where they're located. I want to point out that the default material for fluid flow simulation is water. If you want to change that, you can just double click and change it using this drop down menu. But we're going to use water for this simulation. So let's hit double escape again to dismiss the heads up display. Okay, so we're basically ready to go. The SID indicates uh, that you're ready by giving you a yellow color around the, the simulation information display. And uh, to solve, just click on the green solve button. Now, in explore mode, I'd like to remind you that we are using our real-time GPU-based solvers. And uh, the benefit of this is you get a result very, very quickly. So let's make these two bodies transparent. Let's click here, let's click this and make them transparent. And you can see that you have results already. Now, if you look at the SID, you'll notice a little white line kind of traveling around that indicates that results are available to display, but the solution is still converging. So while the solution is converging, let's play around with some visualization of results. By default, you're looking at streamlines. You can turn that off uh, here on the bottom right corner. And let's turn on contours. By default, it's going to show you contours of velocity. And there are many different ways you can render contours. So by default, it's uh, something called highest value. And you can change this to outer. And you can do a cut plane. So it shows you the velocity in a cut, cut section. Um, you can turn on what we call the LIC plot, which once again shows you um, a different way of visualizing the results. So this is uh, the velocity field. So if I go back to the contour display, and let's say I go to uh, highest value, I can click here to change the variable I'm viewing to temperature. So you can see what that looks like. Let's click to the outer. So this shows you the temperature on the outside of the domain. Just many different ways to visualize what's going on. Okay. Now, um, you'll notice that um, at the outlet, we have uh, quite a lot of flow recirculation uh, going on. So you might be interested to see what this flow distribution looks like farther away from this location, uh, as if you had extended this, uh, this, uh, this outlet. So you can easily see what that looks like by selecting these faces and then accessing the halo and going into the geometry tools. So you'll notice that in addition to physics tools, we also have access to selection tools and geometry editing tools. So let's use the move tool, which is this one. And then let's grab this red arrow and simply drag the geometry over. The moment that happens, you'll notice that the fluid volume is updated and it starts recalculating almost instantaneously. And you'll see the solution updating in real time. So let's wait for that little white guy uh, to go around the, uh, the SID. But you can see the power of the GPU powered uh, simulation. Okay. So, um, here you go. This is your basic introduction to a fluid flow simulation using ANSYS Discovery. 
in the explore mode using um, the real-time GPU for fast directional guidance on the performance of this particular uh, duct system. So that's the end of part one of this uh, tutorial. Please go to part two, where I'm going to show you how you can take the same geometry and perform a much higher fidelity solution using our advanced CPU-based flagship ANSYS solvers. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in part two.